This is part 7 of how to make a coal-fired steam engine boiler plant and it's called cladding the upper part of the boiler. With the sad demise of most of the local model shops I can no longer go into a model shop and buy some mahogany. I have to buy it online. And it's the same price as it used to be but it's half the length. But such is life. And here I'm opening a pack of mahogany that has just arrived in the post. The other items that you can see on the table are from Blackgate's Engineering. A piece of copper pipe for the chimney and a piece of phosphor bronze to make the boiler extension fittings for the taps and also while I was buying these parts from Blackgate's Engineering I also bought two more gunmetal rings. These rings are smoke box door rings for a sweet pea locomotive and in case you're wondering why I bought two of them one of them which I've machined and it's sat in the middle of the picture is the lower ring for the top part of the boiler and the other one that I haven't machined yet I'm going to incorporate into the base. More about that in another episode, because this episode is mainly covering the cladding of the boiler. The first thing to do is to measure the boiler accurately, set up the guide on the bandsaw, and cut one piece of mahogany. Whenever I cut mahogany planks, no matter how thick they are, I always do it with the piece of mahogany up on its end, and this ensures that the bandsaw blade always cuts the mahogany planks square. And of course the reason for just cutting one plank, not a lot of them at once, is to make sure that it's the right size. And once I know it's the right size, I can go back to the bandsaw and cut quite a lot of planks at once. So here's the process, it's quite simple and very much common sense. I hold four planks together and all the planks are up on the end. I then push them against the guide to make sure they're the same length. And this way I cut the planks four at a time. A very quick process, one of the quickest parts of this job. So after a while I end up with quite a lot of planks. I'm using the as yet unfinished ash pan as a receptacle to hold the planks in. These planks are 6mm wide by 3mm thick. And as you can see, they're about right, they just allow the bushes to protrude slightly. And without saying much more about it, it's time to get on with the job. I hold the plank against the first pair of bushes, these are the water gauge bushes, and I make a pencil mark. And then using a small drum sander in my Minicraft drill, I proceed to cut out the shape of the water gauge bushes. Unfortunately for this boiler, this drum sander is too small, and when I use the next size up, that's too big. Sometimes I find I get very lucky, and the larger of the two type of drum sanders is exactly the right diameter to suit the boiler bushes, but the bushes are quite small on this boiler, so neither of these drum sanders are the correct size. This is a top tip. Whenever you're doing a boiler cladding job using mahogany or any other kind of strip wood, once you've got the finished sizes that fit round the boiler bushes perfectly, always recess the underside. That's because there is always some silver solder around the outer edge of the boiler bush where it meets the boiler barrel and that's sufficient to hold the piece of wood away from the boiler bush. But that's not the problem here. The problem is my bad workmanship. So I started again. I couldn't live with a gap of that magnitude around the boiler bushes. You have to decide though how far you're going to take it. And this is a much better fit. I just need to chamfer the underside edge of the wood so that it sits exactly up against the bush. And then I apply this cyanoacrylate adhesive. When you're doing a job like this, don't go mad with the cyanoacrylate adhesive. If you put too much glue on the joint, it will run all over the place and you don't need it. These planks are going to be held in at the top and the bottom by two metal rings. Sometimes I use boiler bands, but on this one I'm doing it in a slightly different way. But one thing's for certain, you must make sure that the first plank that goes in place is perfectly level. And here's another good tip for beginners. Before you do this job, have a look at the boiler and make sure that all the bushes are in the correct place. And another good tip, before using mahogany stock, have a look at the grain and discard any where the grain is a little bit too fancy so that when you fit all the planks, they look like they've come from the same tree. By the way, this video is speeded up 2000%, that's very much faster than I did this job. And I've already got round the other side to where there are quite a lot of bushes. These are the clack bushes. 
and when the boiler bushes suddenly become in close proximity to each other, the job gets very fiddly. You put little pieces in like I've just done, then you put another couple of planks in and another little piece. And you have to ask yourself, how good do I want this to be? Well, I want this to be pretty good. There are one or two useful tricks that you can apply to fill in gaps between the planking and gaps around the bushes. Don't worry if you get any cyanoacrylate adhesive on the top surface of the planks. This will all rub off when you start to sand it down. Now you can see why I started the planking at the side of the water gauge bushes, because when I get right round the other side, the very last plank is thinner than the rest of them, and this single thin plank is just behind the water gauge, which is quite good really, it's the best place for it to be, because no one will ever notice there is one plank thinner than all the rest. Normally I would use an orbital sander to do the rubbing down part of this job, but I'm doing this by hand because the boiler bushes stick out a little bit, and I don't want to round them off with the power sander. Tips and tricks for filling gaps in mahogany cladding. The easiest one is just to apply some cyanoacrylate adhesive to the wood, and it looks horrible, but don't worry about it, it works. And just let the cyanoacrylate adhesive run into the crack in the wood, and then sand the top part of the wood, and all the wood fibres from the sandpaper will fall into any gaps between the planks, where there's plenty of cyanoacrylate adhesive, which will suddenly soak up the wood fibres, and then the gap disappears. With this cladding job, I didn't have any bad gaps anyway, so I didn't need to use that method. And here's another method, possibly a trifle unorthodox. Once you've finished sanding the boiler, do not remove the dust from round the outside edge. Just go straight at it with a cloth and some varnish, which will pick up the dust, and as you go round, you're rubbing the dust into any potential gaps in the cladding. This is a polyurethane type varnish, and it's oil-based. Do not use the water-based stuff, because when you start to coat it, it can go a little bit wrong. This is the method I always use, and it seems to work out. What's going to happen is, when I steam this boiler, the planks are definitely going to open up and expand and contract. And on some larger boilers, the planks can contract so much as they dry out with the heat, that I can actually get one more complete plank in sometimes, around the outside edge of the boiler. I don't think that's going to happen with this boiler, because it's quite a small one, and the planks are all very small. We shall see. And by the way, I'm using the wipe on, wipe off principle. I do not want this boiler to look all glossy and shiny. I want it to look almost like oiled wood. I've done many of these sort of jobs over the years, and like everything else, you get good at it if you practice. So I've assembled the boiler very roughly. The columns are not turned, and the bottom part of the boiler is not finished yet. The copper tube chimney is now in place, it just needs a nice brass cap at the top. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with the lower part of this boiler yet. I may end up cladding it in mahogany like the top part. I'll give it some thought as the job progresses. There's still quite a lot to do. But I'm finding this a very enjoyable job because the boiler itself is beautifully made and I can choose all the components and make them myself from scratch. I mentioned at the beginning of the video that when I went up to Blackgates, I bought a third firehole door ring for a sweet bee locomotive. I'm going to use this and integrate it into the base. The base looks very, very plain. But with a bit of turning of the gunmetal ring and a little bit of turning of the cast iron base so that the pieces fit together, it should look quite ornate. And also it will help to isolate some of the heat from the ash pan from the baseboard it's going to be mounted on. And that's about it for this episode. So as usual, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.